Hey, it's Raven Nadical here. Um, just letting you know that the uh, knife drawing, subscriber knife drawing, is going to end tomorrow night. Um, so get your uh, entries in. Uh, <laughs> man, I'm just exhausted from this weekend. I had a lot of training and then I had to work today. Anyways, um, I'm going to also entitle, or entitle this one in the SHTF series, um, America's Future, or we're going to call it What's Going On, What's What to Expect. So, within 24 hours, we had two mass shootings, right? They were a thousand miles apart. One guy was a white supremacist, and the other guy was an Antifa member. And these are examples of the polar opposites, right, in our country. A country so divided that even these guys... The Antifa guy, who's supposed to be this left-leaning guy, can't find a home on the Democrat side. And the white nationalist guy, he can't find a home on the conservative side. Why? Because he's too extreme for, you know, his racist beliefs. And what are their response? Well, all they've ever done with their entire lives is play video games and probably grew up in a broken home. And I'm going to take a wild guess that they probably got you know, the standard medication of ADHD meds or some depression meds, so they were all jacked up. What are you going to see, though, from now on? Well, the news media makes a big deal out of these people, and they make a big show of force, well, both left and right. The left likes to promote anti-gun, the right likes to try to push anti-gun subtly, but they're also pushing things like agendas of, like, trying to control media. The Republican side, or our conservative side, wants to control Facebook, and they want to control these private companies. And I go, you know, that's not right either. What do I see for the future? I see more attacks like this. Because what does it do? It instills a lot of fear in people. People are afraid. And when they're afraid, they're going to take those chains, wrap them around their neck, and feel safer. Because safety is important to these people. Safety is important. If you can claim that you can prevent mass shootings, people will give you their guns. People will give you their permission to protect the free speech and what you want to write. People will give you the ability to search your house. Because, you know what? I don't want a mass shooter out of the loose. We can solve this problem with government. The real sad thing is, it's not so much a gun issue as it's a quality of life or it's a family issue. We abandoned everything that had a moral, upstanding character and we replaced it with some sort of d demonic lifestyle. They don't they don't have a sensual thing. Like, I believe, you know, you can have an upstanding person who's an atheist who still has a moral compass or agnostic, but there's a lot of them out there right now who whose focus is on the left. So they have a religion in some more of... They have a religion kind of in socialism. They chose that. And they basically have bred onto the hate side of the left. And just as much as the white supremacist is on the right, supposedly. The funny thing is most white supremacists in KKK, they're all Democrats. So it's more of a... It's a blend. I mean, you do have both. Um, but you're, you're seeing hate groups getting more violent and more active and you know what you're going to see I think you're going to see things like the Muslim groups who have no central leadership getting riled up and making an attack you're going to see the KKK or white supremacist groups excuse me get riled up make an attack you're going to see Antifa people rile up make a bolder attack and they're, all these little extreme groups are going to do it and they don't really have central leadership and it doesn't take much. It took one person. It took one person with a gun to go and do this damage. And now look how much damage is done. You know, we're willing to throw the chains on. Ooh, wrap me in these chains because I want to feel safe. I want to find a way to end this. Well, how do you end this? The real way to end it would be you lessen the restrictions on guns. You get people trained. You get people to stop being a sheep and a sheep become a sheep dog. And you get people to understand that, hey, look, your life is your life, and if you want to protect it, 
you need to step up to the plate, learn how to shoot a gun, learn how to defend yourself, learn how to fight, and learn to take things on your own. Protect your family, because the government is not going to be there for you. Nobody's coming to save you. But most won't. Most would rather take the easy route and go, there's got to be a way to regulate everything so that we can just basically exist. We need to exist. And I need a regulation that takes away guns if my neighbor looks like he's angry. And I need a way to prevent this. And I need a way to prevent thought crimes. So, I think you're going to see more of this. You're going to see... My, my theory back about a year ago, or two years ago, was you were going to see shootings at malls. And my fear is, because so far it's never happened, my fear is you're going to get an Antifa group who studies squad tactics or fire team tactics. You're going to get an extreme group who studies these tactics and executes these tactics. And they go into a mall with a plan, not just a walk through the parking lot and shoot up the place, but an actual plan. They barricade doors. They trap hundreds of people in, and they just go to town and wind up mowing out all these people down. And you know what? They don't care if they live or die, and that's their thing. I mean, to me, that's going to be an incident. And it's going to be not just one incident. It's going to be several. You're going to have a mall shooting here. You're going to have shootings and or someone destroy a building over there. You're going to have someone firebomb something. You're going to have people go out west and start forest fires so that resources are now pulled versus combating forest fires. You're going to have things where they, they booby trap stuff so that when the fire department shows up to fight these fires they get hurt. Why? Because if the fire department is getting hurt to the point where they don't even want to come out, the fires are going to grow and then resources are going to have to be even more larger. People are going to be wasting military and police and fire and EMT and they're going to be stretched out and you're causing chaos. I mean, think about it this way. You had a DC sniper, one guy or actually two guys, taking hot shots from the back of their trunk and they shut down an entire city. They shut it down. What would happen if all of a sudden you started seeing roadside bombs like you saw in Iraq. What, you know, the war finally comes to America, right? You know, these bomb makers and stuff start planting bombs on the side of the road. You know, all of a sudden, now travel becomes problematic. You can't travel. You can't go from one state to the next because now they're going to invoke rules of, like, you need a federal ID to get from Wisconsin to Minnesota, you're going to get searched. And each state's going to have their own border. Each state's going to have their own travel checks. And people would flock to it. Because as soon as the first bomb went off, they're going to come out with something like this. And people will beg for it. I mean, I look at it like this. People are begging to be put in chains so that they can feel safe and not have to think, not have to act, and not have to do anything. Because our country is lazy by nature. I mean, look how far we've come and look how far we gave up. I mean, we went from a country that fought a war because we didn't like taxes. We didn't. We wanted representation. We wanted the ability to be free men. And then slowly, the founders knew it, but slowly over time, it became eroded and eroded and eroded and eroded. And we made more laws and we gave more power to the government. I mean, we wanted a limited government, but every time there's an incident, they take more. And whether you want to say it's a false flag. Now, I don't think it's a false flag in the sense like it didn't actually happen. But maybe you're right. Maybe someone did coax someone. But I think if someone's going to coax people, these are actual groups. And I think you could have people coaxing a group to attack someone. You could have them going, hey, you know what? Man, you are right. You know, you get people riled up. You get there. So, I think... I think you're going to see things in the next year or so get worse. I mean, you're going to have uh, the election coming up. You're going to have uh, more rallies for all these different elections and elect people coming up and campaign rallies. And you're going to see it get worse. I mean, there are fractions on both sides of the party, but there are fractions within fractions. I mean, you have the old Democrat Party fractioning against the Socialist Party, and it's not pretty. They, 
and elected people who are raising war cries, you know? So, I hope everybody has a good week this week. Uh, stay alert, stay alive. Uh, I know for myself, I'm reevaluating everything I do for uh, my everyday carry. Um, I'm also reevaluating, and our group is like focusing in on making sure we evaluate our medical abilities and, you know, take a look at yourself, what you're doing, like you too. Take a look at yourself and go, hey, you know, reducing risk, right? Do, and we live in a smaller town, but do we reduce risk by going to a popular place? No. I mean, yes. <laughs> we, we avoid the popular place. You avoid the places where the limited en entrances and exits are. You go. You avoid places like this. You try to maybe order more online, right? Um, I think it's just important that we do these things. Um, I wouldn't recommend going right now to hot spots like Chicago, Milwaukee, you know. Avoid these places. Avoid places where you can't get out. Whether it's just getting driving out, but much less a building where you can't walk out. I mean, as much as I think it's, it's fun to go and travel, right now I would say it's getting worse to the point that, you know, if you can't get somewhere on a tank of gas, you're in trouble. You know, you need to plan for different things. So... That's Raven Tactical, and thank you for all the comments. Keep subscribing, hit that bell notification. That bell hopefully will give you the alerts of when stuff pops up. I know there's a couple options when you choose it. So, um, appreciate it. Have everybody uh, comment down on this one. Uh, it should be released on Tuesday this week. So, have a good day.